Hello, everyone. This is Christy Hudson with Cairo Health USA, and my good friend, Lawrence Pepler, a pet to everyone, from Cairo Touch. Um, we are so excited to have you join us. Third time's the charm. We're going to get through this fantastic webinar on how to properly set up your Cairo Health USA fee schedule and the Cairo Touch software. Um, a little bit about Pep and I. Uh, Pep has been with Cairo Touch for 12 years. And what that means for you is he is like the man. Uh, he's very serious about, you know, breaking down and getting to the root of any issues that you're having with your software. He's happy to investigate, figure it out, come up with a solution. He's just incredible at troubleshooting. Um, and he's incredibly patient with me because I ask a million and one questions. Um, he's been a trainer, <laughs> manager of customer support, and he is currently the client success manager for Cairo Touch. Um, I'm Christy with Cairo Health USA, and I've been here for eight years, um, and I had started out as Dr. Ray Foxworth's personal assistant, and I am now the director of business relations um, and a certified professional compliance officer, which means I know enough about compliance to uh, be scary, but what how that really benefits you is that I break it down. Uh, Get rid of all of the stuff that makes it mucky and confusing on the the clinic level and make it simple and easy for you to follow, be compliant, be successful, be profitable in practice. Hey, Christy, thank you so much for um, for the introduction. You are awesome, and it's so exciting for us over at Car Touch to partner with our friends, our comrades over at Cairo Health USA to present this webinar today. Um, to help solve those questions that we often hear from our shared clients in as much as how to set things up in Cairo Touch so that they work in congruence with uh, Cairo Health USA's um, programs. So we're just really excited to be here today. Um, so hi, everybody. I'm going to just start with some just some general housekeeping before we get going. Um, you know, just some, just some things to know about this, this go-to webinar interface face and how this webinar will work. Um, first off, at any given time during this presentation, if you experience any issues with sound, um, any sort of modulated sounding voices from us, um, my recommendation is to use or switch over to the telephone connection as opposed to the mic and speakers connection for your uh, audio today. The telephone connection just tends to be so much more stable than the audio connection or the mic and speakers connection because that's dependent on the processing power of the individual computer that you're using so just keep that in mind if you do have any issues um, go ahead and, and, and uh, uh, switch over to that telephone connection I think you'll find, have it a much better experience um, beyond that one of the things we're going to do today is we're going to present a couple of different scenarios uh, both Christy and I are going to work together to kind of create what we've seen happening out there in the field in our clients' offices um, and kind of take you through some common scenarios that we think may ask, answer your questions. But more importantly, if we don't get those questions answered, we want to make sure that you get the opportunity to ask them so that we can then have the, the fortunate opportunity to go ahead and get those answered for you. So at the bottom of your GoToWebinar toolbar, there's a little questions interface. And if you type a question in there, Christy and I will both see it, um, and we'll work together to make sure that we get you the soundest answer that we possibly can. I'm going to be presenting in the Kyber Touch software today. So one other little tidbit that I want to mention is, hey, I'm not using real patients. I'm not using anything. Nothing is real in my system except for the fact that it is this is a real Cairo Touch system, and it's version 7.0. So if it looks a little different or you're unfamiliar with what it looks like, it's most likely because you're not yet on version 7.0. We've given the software a bit of a facelift. So although it appears differently, all the buttons are in the same places and it works the exact same way. So most importantly, get those questions in there. And if you're having any trouble or if we need to know something that's going on in the webinar, our screen has gone down, our audio has gone down, Type that in there and let us know. Um, the one last thing I want to mention is, um, hey, this is the first time we've done this, so we apologize for anybody who's to, to anybody who signed up for the previous webinar under the same topic, where 
the go-to webinar tool completely wasn't working globally for anybody in the world. How, how fun was that, Christy? Uh -huh. That was an exciting day, <laughs> to say the yeah. least. To say the least. But nonetheless, what happened that day was we let you down, um, or at least the go-to webinar toolbar and interface let, let you down. And um, uh, the 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 part of that that was most disappointing was, gosh, we were so prepared to do this. We were so jazzed to do it. And then we just couldn't because the interface didn't work. So we apologize, but we're back. Um, and Christy and I are going to take you through um, how to uh, set up your capped visit fees in Kyrie Touch, um, as well as how to um, set up utilize the, some of the care package options in Kyrie Touch um, so that uh, if you have a planned um, uh, treatment of care plan for your patients. Um, so we're going to co cover a couple different topics. Um, and with that, we'll just get going. So what, what, what should we go after first, uh, Christy? Um, you know, why don't you pick? Okay. Um, so over here at Kyra Touch, one thing we notice when we it, it, when we talk to, to folks who are using Kyra Health USA is we need to set things up in the system such that um, the discount plan is being utilized for the patient, uh, whether it be on a uh, capped visit fee per visit fee type of plan or whether it be uh, an extended uh, care plan over a period of time that might be a max out of pocket that the patient would be responsible for. Um, and then, you know, we wouldn't charge them anything further. So there's a couple of different things we're going to cover today. The first is going to be the capped visit fees. And by that, I mean, hey, per visit, we're going to charge. And, and, and you, you kind of steer me back in the right, in the right direction if, if I'm going off. Uh, on a tangent here, Christy, but um, with capped visit fees, we're talking about, hey, we're going to treat our patient each visit, regardless of the services that we render, we're going to charge them a maximum that day, um, and we're going to discount the rest. Uh, we want to do that in a way where we're presenting um, a document that we can give the patient so that they can see that discount, et cetera. And um, the way that we would do that in Touch would be through fee schedules. Now. For those of you who've been with Touch for a long, long time, you'll know that prior to version 6.7, which was the version just prior to version 7.0, um, there was a challenge when setting up fee schedules and utilizing them in a patient's file that was uh, for all those patients who were just strictly cash patients. And the challenge was, and I'm gonna use Jesus here as an example, um, the challenge was that even though we might have a choose a fee schedule set up, and just remember, those fee schedules would be set up under the maintenance application, under charges, and then under fee schedules right down here. And there's my choose a fee schedule. I'm going to probably create another one right here on the fly for you, just to kind of show you how to go ahead and create those for a capped visit fee. Um, but prior to version 6.7, these fee schedules, which give you the opportunity to go ahead and, and, and in essence, act as a filter for your charges. You know, these fee schedules are based on your master list of charges. All of your charges from your master list of charges would be imported into a fee schedule if you were to create a new one. And then you have the opportunity to see what the, which charge you're, you're interfacing with what your total charge amount is, and then what your allowed or maximum patient responsibility for that, that fee would be. And then the difference between what you charge and what's allowed, once that fee schedule's in place on a patient's file, um, would show up as the patient's response, or would show up as a write-off, and then of course what's allowed would show up as patient responsibility. Those didn't work in the past prior to version 6.7, if there wasn't an effective insurance policy in place. So many of you had been burdened with the workaround that we would recommend, whereby we would say, put in a fake policy, make it effective so that that fee schedule would also so to be effective. We made a change in version 6.7, whereby you did not have to have an active insurance policy in place in order for these fee schedules to go ahead 
and operate effectively and perform the duties of uh, writing off the difference between what's charged and allowed. So um, uh, I have an example here with Jesus. Jesus has my my uh, my created choose a fee schedule. And let me just bring that up one more time. I just want to show you what I've done here. It may not be uh, in concert with the, the fee schedule that you use in your office, but it's the one that I've set up in my fake office here. You can see all of my charge amounts for all of my charges. And then over here, you can see the allowed amount. Some of these I've, on my x-rays, I've gone ahead and discounted at 50%. Um, most of my modalities are in here at 20 or $25, as opposed to 50, 30, 75, or whatever I would otherwise charge. And these are just, of course, except for this one, I added an extra zero. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Um, these are just uh, amounts that I came up with as, a, as I was building my database. So the gist of it is you'd want to go through your fee schedule after you've created it by hitting new. You give it a name, and I'll call this a choose a capped visit fee schedule. And, and I can either copy from an existing fee schedule or I can copy, create a new fee schedule based on my master list of charges. In this case, because I've already uh, set up a CHUSA fee schedule that's just straight CHUSA for other instances, maybe for instances that aren't uh, a per visit cap, um, I'm going to copy that one and use that one. So now I've created a new one and now I can go through and basically go ahead and say, hey, if on a capped visit, uh, where, I, where I'm only going to charge a certain amount out of pocket to the patient, no matter what my services rendered are, how would I set that up? Well, in that type of scenario, you're usually talking about there's always going to be a baseline charge that you would otherwise um, assess into the patient's ledger on that day. I'm going to go ahead and assume, since we're, we're, we're all talking about chiropractic, that the baseline charge that everybody's going to get, regardless of if they have additional charges, um, it's going to be the manipulation for the day. So if I go ahead and make my manipulation allowed amount, whatever that capped fee would be, and in this case, I'll say that like for a one to two region, maybe it's 45. Um, uh, for uh, uh, three to four region, I'll set it up at 40. And if it was a five region, maybe I'll say that would also be Maybe I'll call that 45, and that would be my capped fee for the day. I would set up my manipulation charges with whatever my my total amount that I want to collect for my patient is that day. And then I would take everything else on that fee schedule that could otherwise be assessed uh, 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 and that we might otherwise charge the patient for, and I would make the allowance all zero after that. And the reason for that is, and I'll show you a demonstration of this in just a second, and I can do this really quickly just by clicking my down button on my keyboard and my zero button. I'm going to skip through my manipulation charges and then get back over to here. And I'm just going to make everything else zero. The reason for that is once I utilize this choose a capped visit fee schedule on a patient's file, which I'll do right now, and I will go ahead and do that on, um, I'm going to use this Draco because I know he's got nothing in his ledger. Um, we're going to go ahead and associate and attach a fee schedule to a patient on the patient information screen in Touch, right here under fee schedule. So once I've put that fee schedule in, what that's telling the system to do is use this as a filter, regardless of what charges I put in, charge that patient for the manipulation up to my capped fee, but don't charge them for anything else. And so what that'll look like on a, on a daily visit would be like this. I'm going to go ahead and drop in new charges on uh, Draco's file here. We'll say today he came in for a three to four region adjustment. And maybe he had some e-stem and exercise therapy. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and post those charges. So you can see my daily capped fee, $40, comes through. You can see that my total charge would be 50 My patient's being charged 40 if I double click that line item, we know that that $10 is, a, is going to be written off as the difference between what's charged and allowed on that fee schedule. And then in addition, where I would otherwise charge 50 for uh, electric stimulation and 60 for exercise therapy, the patient's been charged nothing because we've capped that fee relative to the manipulation charge right here. Um, on both of those 
line items for the modalities, you'll see that the $50 has been written off. So that would happen on each visit. I would expect to see whatever the patient's cap fee is relative to the manipulation and then write-offs all along the way um, on whatever other charges you would intend to provide within the scenario of that capped uh, visit uh, type of situation. Um, anything that I might be missing in that explanation, Christy, in as much as you recognize how, the, how our clients use the system? No, I think that was that was an excellent explanation. Um, and I will say, because you did have like 40, 40, and 45 in there, just make sure that you know your routine office visit, you have one routine office visit cap B. So if it's $40 or $45, just make sure that it's entered in there correctly. And I know you were typing really fast <laughs> okay. while you were doing it. So they would so all be the same amount. But they I know somebody's going to ask that question. Yeah, somebody's going to ask that question later. So I thought I'd go ahead and an and answer it. No, and it, just it's super. It's super helpful for you to answer it because, or to bring it up because, you know, I'm learning too. I'm learning about Chusa every time we get together. So this is otherwise is more like what you would set up your fee schedule to look like then. Absolutely. Okay. Um, what happens when an extremity is used? Same thing. Would that just simply come in at zero? Because so your cap fee is forty on the. The reaching office visit, so it really depends a lot. Uh, it's really mixed with 4,200 providers in the network. Um, we have some that include the extremity in the routine office visit and some that do not. And so if you are including an extremity adjustment with your routine office visit, you would make it zero. Um, if you had just, you know, a, I'm going to use a random dollar amount, $10 or $5 for an extremity, then you would put that dollar amount in there as an add-on. Um, and you would do that for anything. So like re-exams um, would not be considered a routine office visit service. So those wouldn't be zero in the cap CC schedule. So if you're charging, you know, $25, $30 for each um, re-exam, then you would also put that dollar amount in there as well. So only things that would be zero would be what makes up that routine office visit cap fee amount. Gotcha. Thank you. I mean, like I said, I, I learn every time I get the chance to talk to, to Dr. Ray or Christy or anybody from the Cairo Health USA team. And hey, it's never too late. Or if we're if we're if we're not learning, we're not living. That's what I always say. Um, Amen. So. Awesome. So, and I mean, typically what we'd see in this type of situation is, you know, the patient would pay their daily fee, whatever their, whatever that is. We'd get that balance not back down to zero. Oh, let me just go ahead and edit that and put in the right amount. Remove transaction and new payment for O and post. And so, Another question that I would imagine at some point in time might come up would be, hey, what can I give the patient now to show them in as much as documentation wise, whether it be a receipt or a statement or a ledger statement or super bill or whatnot, which will show them what they would otherwise be charged, what they have been charged, and then of course what they've paid. So the, the beauty is anything that we see on this line item in this ledger will show, out, show up on the patient statement. Um, so just uh, keep that in mind if I were to go ahead and print out a patient statement now for these dates of service here in June. We would see that that adjustment is right on their on their statement so they'll realize and be uh, totally you know uh, aware of the fact that they've you've been uh, you've been awesome enough to give them that discount. Um, so the other situations that we wanted to just go through briefly, and then we'll start going through questions, um, uh, would be, um, you know, what if you have a patient on a dedicated plan of care? What if you, what if you're in a situation, um, whereby, uh, we have the patient coming in, we know that we're going to, we're going to see them for a certain amount of visits and we want to, we know 
you know, after kind of working through our own internal algorithm, exactly what we want to charge for that allotment of visits, exactly what the patient would be responsible for out of pocket, um, and we don't want to charge them anything more than that. There, there's two ways of setting that up. And in Chirotouch, what I would recommend is using the fee schedules. Um, and the, I'm sorry, not the fee schedules, rather the care packages that are in Chirotouch. I have some that are set up with a couple of specific patients. I have um, Visit in Moody here, um, where I've gone ahead and I've set up what we call uh, visit-based care packages. And so if you know, if this isn't a, you know, the type of patient who's just coming in ad hoc, um, they're just coming in as needed, which would be a good representation of what we showed you just a few moments ago with the capped visit fees. If you have a patient who you have on a dedicated plan of care, you know, maybe they're coming in, maybe you're selling them 10 visits. Um, and under those 10 visits, you want to um, provide them with certain amounts of services that would then, um, uh, charge them a specific maximum, not charging them anything more for those services. We offer a couple of different care packages that might actually go ahead and hit the mark for you. Um, there's two that I want to show you. There's one that's called uh, a visit based, which is what I'm showing you here. And I'll show you how to set that up in just a second. And then we'll show you how that works in a ledger. And then there's another one called a max out of pocket uh, plan. The difference between the two. They're both visit-based um, in that they allow a certain specific amount of visits. But the difference is a visit-based package, as opposed to a maximum out-of-pocket package, will charge the patient upfront for however many visits we intend to provide them with uh, for that dollar amount. And it will write off those visits all along the way. So they get charged for the package. Their normal visit charges, so long as they're covered charges under that package, would write off as you see here, right? And um, and whatever they pay would go to offset the charge for the total package. You can see this person's used up two four-visit packages that cost them $200. Um, you know, we see write-offs for the four visits. We've sold them another uh, package here on 12.1. We'll see write-offs for four visits. And then once they've exhausted those four visits, we see the system start to charge them what would otherwise be their normal patient responsibility again. In this case, the normal patient responsibility for this patient is $20 because they actually have insurance and their copay is $20. So when we did exhaust that package, the reason why the system didn't charge them for the full value was it's only charging them their allowed amount for, uh, or, or what would otherwise be their patient responsibility after going through the insurance filters. So um, this is great when you have a patterned plan or a set plan of care for the patient and you know exactly how much you want to collect for that set plan. Um, I'm going to show you how to set this up at the same time I show you how to set up the maximum out of pocket, but I want to explain the maximum out of pocket first. The maximum out of pocket basically treats the patient in the exact same manner as the uh, visit-based care package with the exception that it doesn't charge them up front for the package. It charges them as they go until they reach what was declared when the package was set up uh, in, uh, as the maximum out of pocket that you would collect from that patient. So I have a patient set up over here called Max Weasley. And Max has a Max out of pocket care package. But you can't uh, figure out why I named him Max. Um, Ma Ma and I know that these numbers aren't really realistic to the way that anyone would practice, but I just wanted to make it simple so that it could be easily understood. Um, Max was granted 10 visits, and his maximum out of pocket that we would charge him for those 10 visits would be was $150. Okay. Now I've run those visits through Max file already, and this is what his ledger looks like. Notice that there's no charge for the care package because what we want to do is just collect from Max what we otherwise would collect as his patient responsibility until he's exhausted what we've declared was his maximum out-of-pocket responsibility to us. In his case, it was $150. So here you can see my charges. You can see that they went in under the fee schedule that's in place here. And that's the 
a different fee schedule that I had created, just a straight choose up. Um, more, uh, and I use that for, for cases whereby um, I am utilizing care packages or a patient is on a dedicated plan of care that they've either prepaid for or anticipate paying for. Um, uh, you know, it's not somebody who's just coming in on daily visits. Um, I have them on a real dedicated uh, uh, plan of care. So you can see that he's charged what is allowed under the choose a fee schedule up until he reaches his max out of pocket, which was $150. And then for the balance of the visits that are left, and as much as how I set that package up, I go ahead and charge him nothing because the system writes off what would otherwise be his patient responsibility. So we've reached the maximum out of pocket on, on in this case, because it was so simply set up on visit one and on visit two, we can see that, and, and it, even once we've reached the maximum out of pocket on visit one, we didn't charge him anything more. And then we see the same thing on visit two, and we would see that for the next eight visits um, until he basically exhausts those visits or gets to the expiration date that we've gone ahead and preset in here for uh, usage of those 10 visits. So before I go any deeper on those, what I wanna do is just show you how I set those up in maintenance in the software, because both of those packages are very, one of the main concerns and one of the key things to understand about them is, on the maintenance side of the software, what we've done is we've set those packages up so that they recognize for that specific package, which charges are actually covered under that package. Now I can hit the details button here within Max's care package area, and it'll show me exactly which charges I've assigned to be covered for Max. Okay. I can also hit the history button and see which charges led us towards exhaustion of what we had declared was Mac, uh, Max's maximum out of pocket collectible for us. So, um, how did these services get put in here and why are they the ones that are covered? Well, that's where I'm going to take you over to maintenance. I'm just going to bounce off of this charge screen. We have this area here called care packages. So if you ever are utilizing care packages in your office, the most important thing you want to do is, in fact, it's vital that you do it. It's required that you do it. You have to set up your care package, uh, your master packages, um, in order to then be able to apply them to the patient. So here in maintenance, if I hit care packages, you can see that I basically have three standard packages. Um, if you were creating one from scratch, what you'd be doing is hitting new. You'd be determining whether or not it's a visit-based or a maximum out-of-pocket based. Now, we also offer service-based packages, which in essence will meter specific um, CPT codes that are available to a patient for a set fee, but I'm not gonna cover that today um, because that gets a little bit tricky and isn't, isn't, isn't the cleanest way uh, for things to operate when you're using, um, you know, Cairo Health USA in concert with Cairo Touch. Um, so if I were to set up a visit-based package, a brand new one, this is what I'd see. I have my master list of charges over here. I can give it a description. I can call this, you know, you know, Bob's package or just my general package, or I can name it whatever I'd like. Um, I'm just gonna call this package visit. And then this is how much I plan to charge for the visit. And this is how many visits it's going to include. Now, these are important figures, but I want to show you that on this level, they're not super important. And in order to impress that upon you, I just want to show you that I'm going to charge a dollar for 100 visits. Nobody in their right mind would ever do that unless they were on the fast track to going out of business, um, which we don't want you to be on. But what I want to do is just sort of implore that this isn't really important at this level. What's really important are what charges are covered within this package visit package. So you want to think outside of the box and really de determine what am I going to cover in this type of plan? You know, am I going to cover x-rays? Am I going to cover everything? Or am I just going to cover, you know, maybe my, manip my manipulation charges? So I'm going to hold my control button down um, to choose multiple items. In this case, I'm going, to, I'm going to cover manipulations. I'm going to cover all of the modalities. I might not cover x-rays. 
Um, I might not cover exams, although I might cover a re-exam. I don't have a 99212 uh, in my system, I believe. But, uh, um, you know, may, maybe I'm going to cover an ice pack. Maybe I'm going to cover some, some supplements. But just make sure you add to the charges covered area everything and the kitchen sink that you intend for this package to cover. Once that's set up and once you've saved it, then over on the patient level, and I'm going to bounce into a different patient just for, we'll go into Susan just for a second here for this demonstration. Um, when I go to care packages and I hit add, I can see there's that package that I just set up. Now on the patient level, this is where we can make a determination of how much this particular patient is going to be charged for this package and how many visits it's going to cover for them, right? If there's going to be an expiration date, et cetera. So most important thing I want you to take away from that is when you're setting these packages up in maintenance, make sure you attach the proper covered charges to the package. Um, anything that's not covered under that package would be charged, the system's going to charge that patient out of pocket as it normally would, even as if that package isn't even in place, because it's not covered by the package. So, um, and then once you get to the patient level, then you can determine based on how long that plan of care is for the patient, or how long they, they need to be seen, um, what you're going to charge them for how many visits. So that's visit based. The max out of pocket base is just a little bit different in that when I come back in your care packages, if I were to go ahead and set up a new maximum out of pocket base, there's just some different questions that need to be asked. But once again, while you're in maintenance, the least important thing is the limit, uh, the max out of pocket limit that you're going to charge the patient. The least important thing on this level is the number of visits you're going to charge them for. Heck, you can even change the name of the package on the patient level. Um, uh, but what's really important, what charges are we going to cover? So if you see the one that I already have set up, I've covered basically everything in the kitchen sink. I just put in that amount, which we know that when we establish it on the patient account, we can go ahead and change whatever it'll, uh, we want it to be and whatever's relevant from that patient. So as I go into, I'll just do a real quick review again of what a ledger would look like when those packages are used. So we'll look at the visit base first. Once again, just a reiteration, charges the patient up front. That balance sits in the patient's ledger until they pay it. In this case, they pay it on the same day. Writes off what would otherwise be their patient responsibility until the amount of visits that they've been sold has been used up at which time we can sell them another package. And keep in mind, in both cases, both of these packages will warn your staff at check-in or check-out once a patient is within two, one, and zero visits left within that package, or if the package itself has expired from a date range perspective. Um, once the package runs out, it starts charging them what their out-of-pocket expense would be if that package wasn't in place. Um, so that would be what, a, what the visit-based package looks like. And then once again, we'll go back into Max's file and show you just a reiteration charging max up until we reach its maximum out of pocket, writing off the balance of the rest of the visits that he has owed to him. So that's how you'd set them up for dedicated, um, you know, predestined packages of care. Um, I know we have some questions coming. Um, I don't know, Chrissy, you think I, anything else I need to, to, to touch on or might have missed? Um, so we have one question that says, we only use the CAP fee for a new patient visit. So flipping okay. back and forth, or back to the regular Cover Health USA fee schedule after ending the new patient visit um, doesn't seem very productive or it could be time consuming. Is there any other way around creating an entire di entirely different choose of fee schedule for a new patient CAP fee? So the CAP fee they only use on a new patient patient visit and I think you and I were talking about before we as we were kind of putting our ducks in a row before this webinar this morning um, I, I 
you know, if you don't want to have to remember to go back in there and change the fee schedule back to your normal schedule after that first visit, I think maybe the best way to handle that would be, um, you know, instead of, I'm going to go ahead and work with, here with Draco here, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Christy, uh, but I, I, I'm going to go ahead and think that you probably don't use a fee schedule at all unless it's their insurance fee schedule and it's an insurance patient, but um, you probably don't use a fee schedule at all. And what happens is, um, um, let me just go ahead and kind of start over from scratch here. What ha happens is without a fee schedule in place, charges come in at their normal value. So I'll go ahead and say new patient, new charge, we'll go ahead and, and um, you know, maybe it's a, we're going to do a, a X-ray and a and an exam. Uh, you know, they're charged their full amount, and then probably the best thing to do after that is to, you know, as you're checking that patient out, go ahead and provide them a discount at the point in time where you're processing their payment. Um, and uh, in in that case, it, it is manual activity that you have to do while. You you're checking them out, but since it's only for that one visit, it seems to be the best usage of time. Christy, what are your thoughts on that? I would agree um, because this new patient visit, um, you're only going to use that once. I don't see the point in entering like a whole new patient telehealth USA fee schedule for that and then having to go back in there and change it. We just recommend that you use like the discount button, apply the discount. Um, and then move them to the Cover Health USA fee schedule. Yeah, and and there's two types of ways to apply that discount. I don't know if your your new patient visit is a, you know, if there's a capped fee for that for that new patient visit, I, it's probably going to be, you know, the the best option for you is to just enter in that discount as a fixed amount, determine what your capped fee is, and and then um, you know subtract that from what their charges are for the day. So if you're capped fee in the scenario that I presented in front of us here is, you know, $75. Well, then obviously this patient's balance is 150. We need to discount $75. Um, and you can describe that discount um, uh, however you'd like, because that's exactly what will show up in their ledger. You know, and if you need to make any notes on it, you can. But that, in essence, will go ahead and apply that discount, which will be visible to the patient so that they know that you've given them this this awesome deal and um, uh, when they go ahead and pay you know you'll be able to see that their balance ends up being zero you know the discount is present and you know all of that will show up on a receipt and or a statement as well so that's probably the best way to handle the the um, uh, if you just cap, you're just putting a cap on that very first visit. Um, I agree. Hopefully that, hopefully that answers the question. Well, we got another great question. It says, when you post a discount to a patient ledger, why does it show up as a payment on the end of day summary report? Hey, that's a really, really good question. Um, and I'm glad somebody asked it. So, um, Let's go ahead and look at that end of the day report. We've applied a discount, so I think we'll have an indication of it for today. So I'm going to go to Billy. Uh, let me just slow down. I'm so sorry, folks. So from your front desk, we're going to go to billing statements reports. We're going to go to reports. And I'm assuming that this client is talking about the end of day transaction activity report, which is kind of your go to balance the day, day sheet report. Um, so if I come here and I just look at practice totals only, and I look at today's uh, end of day report, what um, the asker of the question is saying is, here I'm seeing a couple things. I'm seeing um, that cash payment of $75 that we posted. Um, I'm seeing an other charge of $75, which is also showing up as a payment, which equals into my total payments for the day. Think of it in terms of this way. That discount is a, a credit in your system. Um, and the system wants to sort it as a credit. 
It's not tangible, depositable income, however. So when you go ahead to balance your cash box at the end of the day or determine how much tangible, depositable income you've brought in, it's best to work off of this deposit number because that includes all the cash you brought in, personal checks, credit cards, direct debits, minus any refunds you may have processed that day. Your deposit number is the number that you want to balance to each day. Now, the question is why is that other charge or that non-depositable credit, the discount showing up under payments, I can't tell you why because I didn't do the development way back when when this was decided. Uh, were it up to me, this little word right here where it says total payments would say total payments and credits uh, and or or even you know, I, I'm a support guy, so I want to make it, this is like Kyra Touch for, you know, f for fifth graders. Uh, in, I want everything to be as easy as possible because I, I want everybody uh, to have the best experience using the software and for it to be really super intuitive. I'd like to relabel that total payments and non-depositable credits. Um, but yeah, what I would do is balance your cash box at the end of the day to this deposit number because that's real depositable income that will go in the bank as opposed to discounts or other types of credits that you may have applied on patients' accounts. Um, so balance to that deposit number. Would write-offs show up under other as well? Yeah, um, not write-offs on the line item per se, um, but write-offs when, you know, when you're posting insurance, write-offs are gonna show up as an adjustment to charges. Um, Write-offs, this is only going to calculate individual line items that you've posted, things that you've done on the back end of the charge. And what I mean by that is, if I go back to the ledger here for, for Max, if we do things back here, those are not going to show up as a non-depositable credit because they're write-offs on the line item, typical to the write-off that you might see after posting insurance or typical to a write-off because there's a difference between what's charged and allowed. All you're gonna see as a non-depositable credit under that payment category on your end of the day would be anything that literally shows up as a line in this ledger and shows up as a credit in this ledger. And maybe I used the wrong example. We probably should have used uh, Mr. Moody here. Anything that is, uh, oh, let me go back here. Anything that's showing up as a credit. Where did I apply that discount? I think it was for this guy. Oh, I'm just pulling up the wrong patient. I'm so sorry. You made me nervous, Christy. I'm sorry. No, don't be. There we go. There we go. So of course, yeah, it was. Um, I hadn't checked the guy out. I hadn't checked out Draco yet. Um, so anything like when when we go to Draco's ledger, anything that's showing up as 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 its individual line item will show up as an item that adds into total payments or total charges for the day. Okay. So the next one was, and and I can understand where I've heard this before, but they want to know can they. Put in a request to the developers to have them change those discounts using the discount button to the write-off category. And I, the reason for this that I've heard many times from our providers was because of account, for accounting purposes at the end of the year. Um, because a lot of times when they're accounting, uh, people are looking at the end of year report, they're trying to count that discount button, um, those discounts given as like income and not as write-offs because they're not showing up as write-offs. <laughs> so, um, yes, I can ask them. Will they? That's a different story. So, um, and this is a common request. So my advice is on the CT community, we have the product idea section. And while, because we have 16,000 clients and growing, and each of those offices has an average of 3.4 employees, we get what amounts to be, oh, I'm gonna say this at minimum, hundreds of 
suggestions for the development team to work on per month. Um, I'm guessing that's a low estimate, but you know, at the CT community, the best way to go ahead and get suggestions like that moved up the list. I, I'm sure somebody else has made that suggestion. I'm just going to pull up the CT community just really briefly. It, it, um, it, in fact, I'm not going to pull it up because I don't want to interrupt the internet uh, right now, but like in the bottom left hand corner of the CT community, there's a product idea section. You have the opportunity to upvote and downvote folks ideas for development. I'm sure you'll find that idea in there. And if you upvote it, that's where our product managers go to every time we come up with a new version of the software to determine and help prioritize what feature requests we'll introduce. So I would implore you to go ahead and, and put that request in or upvote that request. I'm certain it's in there. Um, and I, I, I would absolutely be will write there. them. Because I have made this request before as well. And I will tell you that in addition to upvoting, to making sure that your voice is heard, that this is important to you as a provider and billing person in a chiropractic office. So make sure you do that. And then be patient because working with development, um, Pep and I will both tell you that a lot of these things that were like a no brainer, like how hard could it be? I once asked that in a Cairo Touch development meeting. Um, and there's a lot of programming that goes on the backside for something as simple as a button and where the data is placed on a report. So you just have to be super, super patient, but just keep monitoring it and put those requests in there, upvote the stuff that you know you, you really need into the software. It's so, so important. Like I really can't tell you how important it is. <laughs> and, 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 if, and if you come here, I mean, you can see what the top all time suggestions are. You can also, um, you know, uh, uh, sort this by what's planned and what's about to be delivered. Like for instance, you know, I can tell you that, um, you know, these are things that people have asked for that is either delivered and is an existing feature. All of these started right here on this page um, and more so. There's many, many, many more pages of these. So um, promote or upvote them as much as you can. Um, I, and just managing your expectations because I'm a client guy. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just want you to be a happy client and I want to do everything I can to make you a happy client. Um, uh, we're not going to be able to get to all of them. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know that life is long enough for anybody to get to all of them. And believe it or not, we've got a, a dedicated uh, development team of, gosh, 22 developers and, and growing. Um, so each time we do release a new version, we've clipped off what we'd like to th we'd like to think we're clipping off five of the top 10 existing suggestions there each time we come out with a new version. So, um, so make those suggestions. We, we love them. And I can't say how much I love this new version because it is so pretty. Hmm. So sweet. Christy's like the sweetest person in the world too, by the way, if you've never met her. Um, any You're other so questions sweet. that we can get to? Uh, Looks like we've got about oh, 10 minutes is, left, so let's see what we can, what we can, who can we help? Well, let's see. Sue wants to know what's the best way to set up a choose a patient who has Medicare and is now on maintenance. So I will say that just like we did the fee schedule that was the fee schedule cap fee for Cover Health USA, you would do, you have to have a choose a fee schedule for Medicare as well. When you're doing that, um, you would put your, Medicare allowable amount and for your adjustments and then everything else would be your choose a fee schedule for um, you know your modalities your therapies things like that um, so that way you're collecting um, or however you're charging them for their maintenance visits um, whether you're charging the allowed amount if you're charging them your actual or your choose of fees, as long as you're super consistent. But you do have to have, um, you do have to have a separate choose of Medicare fee schedule uh, for your Medicare patients, and that's the easiest way to do that. Um, oh, is that going to look like this, Christy? Christy, are, are, is it because we're charging the manipulations to Medicare at the same rate that we, of course, have to charge, which is the charge that we charge everybody for them? That is correct. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Yeah, so and, and probably the best way to go ahead and create that is just, you know, if you already have your choose a fee schedule, just create a new fee schedule and copy that choose a fee schedule, right? So all the, your modalities and everything else is already brought in, so you don't have to recreate the, the wheel, for, for lack of a better term. And then um, just adjust your manipulation charges. Um, let's see, here's a quick question for you. It's a car touch question. Since you have 22 developers, are they responsible for system maintenance too, or is there another group that does that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not sure, quite honestly. I, I don't lead the developer team. I, I get to, I get to assist sometimes in testing stuff that they've created and, and helping them to know what is the most important. Um, I, I, I'm I'm certain that you know our our director of development is responsible for system maintenance but system maintenance is such a vague term um we're certainly not responsible for your internal network um system um uh but yeah I mean yeah I mean we're responsible for maintaining our system uh so yeah I, I Well, and Phil, <laughs> Phil comes back with a question, why is there such an aura of mystery about developers? Um, it, it's not an aura of mystery, Phil, and I, and I don't know that we're really on topic for this particular uh, town hall that, that, we're, that we're here for, but um, you know, I'm happy to take that up with you offline. You know, developers need, in order to get work done, need to have their head down developing. And it, you know, if you've ever written in code, you know it's kind of, you know, um, something you have to concentrate on. So there, 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 I wouldn't say there's an aura of mystery of our, of our developers, but are they untouchable? Do they, do they pick up the phone and talk to clients? Not necessarily. Product managers talk to clients and then set the agenda for developers. So, um, y you know, um, developers are amongst the most highly paid people in any industry. You know, computer engineers, developers, they make, a lot of money and therefore they need to have a lot of throughput um, um, so we keep them busy and so does that product idea section and they are, are happiest when they are I was gonna say and developers yeah. are happiest when they are playing in the code and working on new things and solving problems not That's when they're right. in meetings I can say that That's for right. for I, I had meeting with development one time, and it's so much easier for me to meet with other people at Cairo Touch and letting them pass that information on to developers to get that working because I don't speak and, code very well. And and not to knock developers, but like sometimes they're not also the most you know social people. Um, I would agree. They tend they tend to be a little bit more um, introverted, you know. Um, as do many highly, highly intelligent people. So. I would agree. And I think I always look at it like after my one and only development meeting that I went to, um, I will say it's almost like there's a language barrier because they really and truly speak their language of coding and have their own methodical way of looking at and seeing things, whereas I look at something completely different. And it, like I said, it's best to have an intermediary there who can understand your way of seeing things and understand how things have to be explained to development. Um, but that was a really interesting question. It made me laugh. <laughs> um, so this is a great question from Elena about Medicare patients having care packages for maintenance care. Um, and should they do any type of prepayment for active care? Um, so this is not a Cairo Health USA question or a Cairo Touch question. That would be a consulting question. There's a lot of information out there about what you can and cannot or should and should not do when it comes to prepayment plans and Medicare patients. And I will say that in my experience, um, we don't do, because uh, we have a clinic as well, we do not do prepayment plans for Medicare patients. Um, and, and a lot of times too, because it's, you know, they might be on maintenance for, you know, five visits and then they're back to active care and then it flip flops and it changes a lot. So I don't know that we, we wouldn't use the care package option, but that's, again, that's our demographic, not your demographic. I would definitely recommend having um, a conversation with a great consultant, uh, both Cara Touch and Cara Health USA work with Kathy Mills Chang. You can even present that at uh, on Facebook if you're following KMC University. Ask that question. They answer questions on Facebook all the time. 
Um, and that's a great way to get questions answered from their support team, um, customer service team. Um, Penny has a great question too. Um, I wanted to get all those Medicare questions out of the way and the development question, but Penny has a great question about how you can legally charge different amounts for the same services to patients using care plans, that all patients had to be treated the same using only one fee schedule for your practice. And Penny, you are absolutely correct. Um, you know, one of the things that I teach um, when I'm talking about fees and pricing um, in practice is I always make my entire audience stand up and say with me, my fee is my fee is my fee. We have a single fee schedule in our practice. And um, if it's okay with you, Pep, I'm going to change the screen really quick. Yeah, switch back. Okay. So I have an actual, um, I have a really good... Um, so here's the thing is your fee schedule, your actual fee is it's where it all begins but there are many layers to the fee schedule within a chiropractic office or really any doctor's office across the country um so you have your actual fees oh what what did i do i hit my mouse and it went crazy on me hold on uh da, da, da. let me click there okay then go back to it okay so you have your actual fees and then you have contracted fees so that would be Cover Health USA, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, Cigna. So your actual fees for service in this example, say an initial visit is 350, your routine office visit is 185. Well, maybe my Blue Cross Blue Shield contract says, hey, that initial visit is, we're gonna negotiate that down to 220. For that routine office visit, we're gonna negotiate that down to say 90. And then in your Cover Health USA fee schedule, what makes it so different with us compared to insurance companies, um, and we are just work in conjunction with the Discount Medical Plan Organization, uh, DMPOs have been around for about 30 years. The funny thing is, is that most all of them are owned by insurance companies. The exception is, you know, we're owned by a chiropractor, um, and we don't tell you what your fees are going to be. When you sign our contract, you dictate what that fee is going to be. So, for this example, I'm going to do a cap fee for an initial visit of 150, um, and maybe I have a 20% discount. And for the routine office visit, we'll do a cap fee of 65. Um, and so now that's part of my contractual fee schedule. So you either pay 350 for that initial visit, or maybe your Blue Cross and you pay your copay, or your Cover Health USA and you pay a cap fee of 150. We also have regulated fees within the office. Medicare is a is a great example of that. Um, you know, again, Medicare only covers the most important thing that you do in your office, which is your chiropractic adjustment. Everything else the patient has to pay for out of pocket. Even using Cairo Health USA, you can um, it can cover those non-covered services, which is why we were discussing that choose a Medicare fee schedule. And then finally, a lot of providers across the country do have um, a hardship fee schedule for those patients who are genuinely financially needy. Um, and again, because both of our companies um, work with some amazing consultants, um, they mostly recommend that you're using like federal poverty guidelines um, as you're defining who is financially needy in your practice. And depending on where they fall determines the amount of a discount that they're going to receive in the office. So you're right. Every chiropractic office has a single fee schedule, but if you're participating in any kind of health plan, you have those contracted fees. If you're seeing PI or workers' comp patients, again, those are a lot of times regulated fee schedules depending on where you practice. Um, Medicare, again, regulated fee schedule. And then, of course, your financial hardship fee schedule, which is part of your financial policy. So, Penny, I hope that answered your question. And then we have this example because I know not everybody who registered for this webinar, Penny, it's the how to input your Cairo Health USA fees and your Cairo Touch software, but not everybody who registered uses Cairo Health USA. Um, a lot of them did, but not everybody used Cairo Touch either. So a lot of them were Cairo Health USA users but didn't use Cairo Touch, um, wanting to see it. But this is just an example of what your your fee schedule might would look like. And I will say again that all of the fees that we used in today's webinar are for example purposes only. Um, Cairo Touch and Cairo Health USA do not tell you what you should or could be charging in your practice. There's a lot of different things for um, determining what your fees should be. Um, 
and there are a lot of great consultants and websites and there's such great information out there on determining your market value in your area. Um, so I hope we answered everybody's question because um, we're right at the, an hour. I'm so proud of us, Bev. We did it. Um, I do see that there's some outstanding questions out there. I don't know. Do you have any more time? Because I think there's a couple I might be able, there might be one I can pick off. Um, yeah, and, um, and I guess I guess the the one that the one that I think that's really important to answer because we get it all the time too, and I know that you're going to be the best to answer it, has to do with compliance relative to using the different fee schedules. Yeah. So again, it really a lot of the discounts you're offering are contractually compliant, um, and I know we had some people who were asking about the different ways that we had um, used examples on setting up your Cover Health USA fee schedule within the software. Um, so you know, but for those people out there, some of you are using CoverTouch, some of you you are not and you'll know that you're probably looking at this if you didn't think wow this is completely different than maybe I do it in my software because the setup is different in every different software a lot of similarities and there's a lot of differences um, and how you set it up and these were the best options and the max out of pocket um, you know Rebecca that's that's a great question she's asking about um, does that go against the purpose of CHUSA or too much discounting and again that's the thing is that we don't dictate we'll never ever allow anyone to give away anything for free you cannot give away any service for free or a dollar like the, the example that PEP uses you have to understand that some of our examples are ridiculous and how crazy they are like a hundred visits for a dollar um, because they have to be that way to show that this, again, these are not examples for what we think people should be doing in practice. Um, but you have to find the system that's going to work best for you in your practice because every Cover Health USA fee schedule out there is so completely different. Some do just a percent discount. Some of them have just a new patient visit cat fee. Some of them only have a routine office visit cat fee. Um, some have this example right here where they have a routine office visit cat fee for the first family member, the second family member, up to like the fourth family member. Some of them have very specific discounts for children. And all of those things, we can't cover all of that in one hour on how to set it up in your fee schedule. Um, but we do show you the most common ways that people do set them up. Um, and that we think are the most useful are definitely going to help to keep your ledgers clean. Awesome. Well, um, I know that we recorded this, right? Yes, we did. And yeah. we will be sending it to everybody, um, you know, so that you're able to go back and view it again. Um, I know that we had a close to, I know, like 400 people that originally signed up for this webinar um, before we experienced some technical difficulties. So um, if you signed up and watched it today and you signed up in the past, you may get the recording twice. We'll be posting it as well for our providers on the resources page. When you log in, um, you can be looking for it there as well. Go back and reference it at any time. And then I know that Christy and I had talked also about maybe doing another one in maybe two weeks to a month. So be on the lookout um, uh, for another one because, hey, different webinars beget different questions. Um, gosh, I'm so thankful for you all coming today. And if I can ever be helpful, uh, or there are questions that didn't get answered uh, relative to the front end usage of Curry Touch to, to work uh, as best as it can within. Uh, uh, Use it while using Cairo Health USA plans as well. Feel free to email me. My name is Lawrence Pepler. Everybody calls me Pep, and my email address is L Pepler at KairoTouch.com. It's Lima Papa Echo Papa Papa Lima Echo Romeo at KairoTouch.com. And Christy, love you, and I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you so much. Oh, love you too, Pap. I just put in there, you should all see it in your chat box. I sent you the email address for Pep at Car Touch and myself at Car Health USA. And again, I'm always the person who thinks of questions 20 minutes after a webinar is over. So feel free to email us and we'll get those questions answered for you. And maybe um, 
really expand upon this topic when we redo this webinar again in, in two weeks. And thank you all so much for being here and taking time out of your day and for being patient with us. And Pep, I will be talking to you soon and seeing you in just a couple of, well, what, what six weeks now? That's right. At least, yeah, I think it's, yeah, August, August-ish, if yeah, not sooner. August, that's right. So everyone, have an amazing rest of your day, um, and we look forward to seeing you and talking to you in the future. Bye-bye, everyone. See you guys later. Thank you.